Down in Salisbury, Maryland, kind of in, in the middle of nowhere kind of place, uh, there's a middle, down, middle school down there called Salisbury Middle School. And the parents and the students and the faculty and everybody else down there, they all agree their school is a zoo, a prison zone. It's a place where there's lots and lots of violence every damn day. They call them fights. This is a majority black school. It's a chocolate school. And the fights are happening more and more and more fights slash riots. Now, we just did this exact story in Akron uh, yesterday. You can see it on the video immediately preceding this one. Same deal. Exact same thing. But you know what? Maybe we're giving them a short shrift. I mean, nobody's coming out and saying in public that it's the fellas creating lots more violence, which is what we document here in schools, wildly out of proportion. When we've just had a story in the local paper down there where Salisbury activists, they get real on inequality and race relations in Salisbury. No, Salisbury is a hotbed of white racism. That's what we learned from that story. The white people are always keeping the fellas down in Salisbury. And that, that is reflected in a million different ways. In jobs, income, wages, housing, health care, education. And so by these school officials not coming out and saying, listen, you know, this violence involves black students. But hey, everybody knows that the only reason that the black students are involved in this violence is because of white racism. So the school officials are really giving short shrift to the real reason behind this enormous level of black violence in Salisbury Middle School. Yeah, if you believe that, well, I got a lot of stuff I want to sell you about Salisbury. Uh, in Wicomico County, parents were likening Salisbury Middle School to a war zone. That's right. They say teachers have lost control and the school is no longer safe. Now, as 47 ABC's Kylie Panetta reports, they're demanding change. Parents tell me the situation here inside Salisbury Middle has gotten out of control, that fights are happening way too often. Now they say their kids don't even feel safe coming here anymore. Danielle Mann, the parent of a sixth grader at Salisbury Middle seen getting assaulted in this video, is speaking out. Last week I got a phone call that said I needed to get to the school. My daughter had been attacked. It's just a lot as a parent to have to send her into what I now call a war zone. She tells 47 ABC this didn't surprise her because she's seen the red flags and reported them to the administration. But she feels nothing is being done. If the um, proper precautions had been taken. I really believe it would have not escalated into an assault. Laura Brittingham, also a mother of a sixth grader at Salisbury Middle, echoes those same feelings. It's a place that it sounds to me like a jailhouse riot. She tells us her son would rather switch schools because of the violence. He knows that when he goes to school that there's going to be a fight. There, it, it's, it's a given. It's not even a, I wonder what's going to happen today. It's, oh God, another fight's going to happen today. On Monday, Salisbury Middle put out a robocall to parents, acknowledging fights have increased. 47 ABC reached out to the Board of Education about those fights, but received a generic response saying in part, they are committed to providing a safe school environment and that students involved in fights will be disciplined in accordance with the code of conduct. But for those like Brittingham and Mann, that's not enough. And now they want other parents to get involved with them to create change. It's not just about my daughter. I came for it because I want to make a change and I want to see changes happen. Now all eyes are on the Wicomico County Board of Ed to see if change is actually made to create a better learning environment for both students and teachers. Hey, it is Black History Month. Ask any white student, and there are some white students in that school. I think there's about 25, 30% white students in that school. Ask any white student that goes to a chocolate school, what's the worst month of the year? It's Black History Month. Because during Black History Month, I don't care if you're in grade school, junior high, high school, students learn that black people are relentless victims of relentless white racism all the time, everywhere. That explains everything. And life in these chocolate schools, which is normally hell, for white students, goes up to hell plus. That's what's happening in Salisbury, Maryland right now. Same thing that happened is happening in Akron right now. The same thing we documented all over this country right now. Yet we turn on the television and we see people talking about Jussie Smollett going, let's ignore Jussie, but let's remember what he was talking about. 
Let's remember the real problem, which is all over the country, there are white people roaming the country, most of them wearing MAGA hats, MAGA hats, and they're attacking black people. That's what's really happening. Colin, why don't you see that? Colin, don't you know the numbers? Colin? Please, sir. I want some more. That's a fairy tale. That's a hoax. That's part of the biggest lie of our lifetimes. That's what we do here. We fight that lie. We document that lie every damn day. Sometimes people say, what can they do to be a part of this? Well, sometimes it's simple. You can do simple things or you can do more things. If you see these videos, you can share, like, subscribe, comment on them. That's still an important part of what these algorithms need to see, even though these algorithms are shadow banning us and banning us and marginalizing us at every turn. We still need to do that. Share, like, subscribe, comment. A lot of people contribute to this channel by sending me stories, just like this from Salisbury. That's how I got this story, from a parent in Salisbury. Send me those stories. This is by itself, this is not the world's biggest story, but when it fits into a pattern of black violence in schools all around America, yes, it becomes an enormous story. And if you want to take it to the next level after that, first of all, here's what you don't do. Don't go into work with my book, holding it up, going, hey, everybody, Colin's got it all squared away. It's all because of black dysfunction, black violence, wildly out of proportion. No, if you work in a cubicle, if you're a teacher, a cop, a firefighter, a public employee, you'll get fired. I don't want you to get fired. I want you to keep your job. But support, if you can't speak out, Support people who can, like me. Go to my PayPal, paypal.me slash Flaherty457. Drop a few coins in the cup. Help us do more. Help us keep doing what we're doing. Very grateful for all the ways everybody's supporting this channel right now. But just yesterday, we got kicked off of Facebook for 30 days. So there's no question that, I mean, we're, I mean this is not news, lots and lots of resistance to this to, to exposing the greatest lie of our generation, the hoax of black victimization. Lots of resistance to that. That means it's going to take a lot from you, a lot from me, to bring that mountain of denial, deceit, and delusion down. Even if along the way we make some black kids angry. <laughs>